Hey guys, so um, first of all, if you see me in the same thing, this looking like this in a lot of my videos, it's not because I'm wearing the same clothes. Um, I'm actually going to get loads of filming done today and, and upload it all maybe over a period of a couple of days. Um, just because I feel like doing it today and if I don't do it today I probably won't get it done because I want to do my postpartum update, my labour and delivery, also a breastfeeding video. Um, so I want to get everything done. So that's why if you see me in the same thing. Anyway, so the video I'm doing now um, is my labour and delivery, which I just want to quickly get done out of the way. Um, before Kai goes for a nap, and then I'll put Kai for a nap, and then I'll be able to get more done. Because um, Charlie has been fed, so um, he should be okay. Um, yeah, so, and I'm not sure, the midwife is actually coming over today, so I'm not sure what time, obviously, so I may have to stop filming when she comes. But um, anyway, so, um, first of all, where do I start from? Um, start from oh and another thing um if my makeup like my eye makeup because i can see it looks uh strange i haven't like put makeup on for this video or anything like that um so kind of ignore that because it's just left over from yesterday anyway now get, getting back to my labor and delivery um so i'll start from thursday so i was five days overdue and i had a midwife appointment and uh, went for a second sweep so I had that done and didn't have anything afterwards, I didn't have any cramps, didn't have any bleeding, nothing at all. So I kind of just thought, oh, it's probably not going to work. And then Friday at about 11 in the morning, I um, had my bloody show, which I know that's what it was. It's completely different to the mucus plug. Well, not completely different. It's not as gunky. It's more like it's gunky-ish and then it has blood in. If that, I mean, it's kind of gross, but... Whereas the mucus plug is just looks like snot, that's all I can really describe that as. But um, And I know that your bloody show is more a better sign that labour is near. It doesn't mean you're going to go into labour right away, but it means in the next few days you should go into labour. Well, that's what most people say. So I did kind of think, oh, okay, he'll be here this weekend then. I didn't think he'd come that day. I just thought, oh, this weekend he should be here because that's a good sign. Um, anyway, that uh, happened and I told my mum, she was at work, and just said, you know, I have this. And actually... Charlie did not come at a good time at all and my mum, I blame my mum for this because she totally jinxed it um, because she said that week I bet you anything he'll wait for the snow and then he'll come which he did, he waited for the snow um, and then decided to come so if you lived in the UK or you live in the UK you would know all the warnings that were going on with the snow um, and that's when he decided to come when we'd had tons of snow and my mum actually was going to drive me to the hospital but she can't get out of her estate because they don't grip where she lives so she can't get a car out so she had to walk from her house to mine um but anyway um yeah so we had no way of getting to the hospital so we would have to rely on an ambulance to take us which is fine we just have to call them and tell them you know that i'm in labor and we'd have to use them to get to the hospital um but anyway so that was our plan if he came that weekend which i was pretty certain he would anyway because of my bloody show so my mum did joke about it and say, you know, it's typical that he would wait till now to decide to come. Um, oh, and also at my midwife appointment, they booked my induction date, which is for the following Tuesday, I think. I can't remember. When I was 10 days overdue, they had booked it for. So, um, yeah, Tuesday. Um, so they booked that anyway. Um, so, yeah, I'd had that. And then a few hours later, or I think the afternoon, some sometime in the afternoon, I started to get backache. Now, for me, I have, I've had backache throughout my whole pregnancy, pretty much. I suffered, started to get backache when I was pregnant with Kai. I never had backache before having children, basically. I'd never had any problems with my back. Um, but since having Kai is when my back started to get messed up, pretty much. Um, and with Charlie, it's now got worse. My back actually still hurts now. So I think it's just two children have put a lot of strain on my back. But, um, yeah, so I started to have backache, but... I've had back aches so many times, I didn't think anything of it. Um, it was just middle back and lower back. It was just, no, it wasn't even that painful, it was just an ache. It was just there and it was constant. It wasn't like coming and going, it was just constantly there. Again, I spoke to my mum because she was, you know, trying to keep updated on what was going on with me. And, you know, she said, oh, that's also a good sign. It's like, yeah. I didn't really get my hopes up though because I just didn't feel like I was going to go into labour anytime soon. I didn't feel any different either. Um, yeah, so. And then things started to change, I would say, in the evening. So near Kai's bedtime is when things started to change. My backache had got worse. Um, it was uncomfortable and it was annoying me. It wasn't, like, really painful. It was just annoying um, more than anything. Um, so that was just annoying me. Um, 
and I tried to kind of press on my back where it hurt to try and help my back, which it did help a bit, but then it just came back. It was just constant as well, it was just a constant ache. Um, and then I started to get cramps as well with my back ache, um, but they did not feel like contractions. Obviously I know what contractions feel like, it did not feel like contractions, it just felt, I don't even know how to explain it, just kind of like slight period pains, not even as bad as period pains, but just enough to know that they're there but not really anything painful um so i had those and they were coming and going they weren't constant either so i, I was kind of thinking maybe it's contractions maybe not because they didn't feel like contractions but they did come every maybe 20 minutes something like that i'd have a pain but again they weren't that painful and then when i put kai to bed so around 7 7 15 i went to stand up and i had a gush like a small gush slash trickle and I didn't know what it was. I, then, as soon as I stood up, it happened. And I thought, well, I didn't wet myself. I'm pretty sure I did not wet myself. Um, and then I thought, maybe it's my waters. So I went to the toilet before putting Kai to bed. And I um, noticed watery discharge with blood in it. Um, it wasn't as watery as it was with Kai. It's kind of hard to explain. Because this is how I did not realise. It was my waters, but I did not realise it was my waters. Um, because it was so different to Kai. Because when I uh, my waters broke with Kai... It was a big gush and it kept coming out in gushes, like big gushes, and it looked like I'd wet myself, like it was that much and it would just come in gushes. And it was just water, it literally just looked like water and it smelled like, kind of sweet smelling, but that's how I knew, like with Kai, that was definitely a water. Whereas this time it was in trickles, but it wasn't just water, it was kind of just watery discharge with like mucus and blood in. I mean, that's, that's kind of gross, but that's kind of what it looked like. And I just thought it was my bloody show, just more of that. So I didn't think it was my waters. And it kept, that carried on till I delivered Charlie. I just kept having more of these trickles. Um, and I did tell my mum, and she, you know, because of the blood, really. And she said, unless it's heavy, you know, don't worry. So that was fine. But I did not realise it was my waters. But when I told the midwife at the hospital about it, she said, that does sound like your waters. But um, I did not realise that, obviously, at the time. Um, if I had, I would have gone to the hospital, but I did not realise. Um... Anyway, so I put Kai to bed, went back in the living room, and then the pains got more painful, but again, they weren't really that painful. I mean, I don't know how to describe it, um, to be honest. Um, I think Charlie was just going to be sick or something. I'm just trying to keep an eye on him. Um, anyway, um, so yeah, they were kind of more like period pains, I suppose, at this point. Um painful well not painful just again it depends on your pain threshold to be honest um i would say mine now is actually quite high my pain threshold with certain things not with everything but um with childbirth i would say my pain threshold has actually got better so for me it wasn't really that painful for some people it may have been but um it was just like period pains really um and again they were I didn't really, t I wasn't timing them, but they seemed to come like every 20 minutes, really. Um, I, my backache was still there, just constant. Um, anyway, so I, um, I was speaking to my mum and I told Jake what was going on and said, you know, it does seem like my body's doing something, so he'll be here this weekend, is what I said to Jake. And he was just like, okay, you know, that's good. Um, again, to my mum, I just said, he'll definitely be here this weekend because, you know, these are definite signs of labour. And, you know, that was that. And then about 10, half 10, I went to bed. Um, Jake went to bed earlier because I said to him, you know, if it does happen tonight, you might want to get some sleep. So he was like, okay, I'll go to bed now because I'm tired anyway. I'll get some sleep in. So I was like, okay. Um, then I went to bed to go to sleep, but I did not get any sleep, basically. So for the next, until one in the morning, I was tossing and turning in bed. Um, I started the contraction timer on my phone, like the app, at about 11, I think. I started the contraction timer because I did at that point know there were contractions. Because when I got into bed to lie down... The pain, I noticed it was contractions. Um, the pain radiated from my back to my belly and it would come in waves. You know, it would build up and then ease off. So I knew that they were contractions at that point. Um, anyway, that carried on until one in the morning, basically. And I timed them. They were only every ten minutes. They weren't increasing in intensity. They were just the same. So I didn't think anything of it because they weren't even that painful, to be honest. Um, I would sleep between them and when I had one, it wasn't... I could still talk through it. I could still you know, it wasn't unbearable or anything, so um, I didn't think anything of it. And at one in the morning, because I couldn't go back to sleep, and the pain was more painful at that point, but still not unbearable, I sat up and I just phoned my mum and told her what was going on and said, you know, there's no point in me going to sleep because I can't sleep through, you know, contractions. So she just advised that I'd walk around because gravity is the best thing anyway, and then said, you know, if you phone the hospital, let them know, um, 
see what they say and everything. So I did that. They said, if you want to come in, you can. So they didn't really say much because it was my second child. They said, you know what to do. So if you want to come in, then come in and we'll check you. And there you go. So that was fine. Um, and I find my mum back um, because the contractions got worse suddenly. Now, when I, I'm not exaggerating when I say this. Literally, the second I stood up out of bed, the pain just intensified by a million. Like, it was ridiculous how painful it went from being, like, hardly painful at all. Um, the contractions still were nowhere near as painful as when I was in labour with Kai. Um, like, nowhere near as painful. I don't know why that is, but maybe because my body's done it before, but it really was not that painful, but painful, it was painful, but not as painful as Kai, with Kai, if that makes sense, um, so yeah, they were a lot more painful, and then they were coming every minute, like, I wasn't timing at this point, but they were coming every minute or less, just one on top of the other, um, so then I started to worry, and I was like, okay, I need to find my mum back, because I phoned her and told her, and she was like, okay, I'm coming now, and it was about one in the morning, half one in the morning at this point, so she got, left hers, it takes about 20 minutes to half an hour to walk to mine, um, from hers, and obviously she thought she had enough time, but clearly she didn't, so, um, anyway, um, so I started walking around, packing my bag, um, getting everything ready, and then I went to the toilet, and I had a bit of an upset stomach, nothing too bad, um, and then went into the living room, and that's when the pain got worse again, and the contractions were literally on top of each other, there was no break at all, um, in between them, nothing at all, um, I phoned my mum back because I suddenly had a lot of pressure and in fact I had a lot of pressure when I phoned my mum at about one um, and you know the contractions weren't that painful at that point but I still had a lot of pressure and I told her that, that I've got pressure um, but anyway so um, yeah at that point I had more pressure and I started to feel the urge to push and at that point I was kind of panicking because I hadn't had that long of being in a lot of pain so I was kind of like it's a bit too soon to want to push but my body was doing it for me like I could not stop myself so all I did um I phoned my mum and told her and she was like try and hold on I'm nearly there and you know obviously she knows you can't really hold on but you know and then she said phone the ambulance and I'll be there you know soon just try and hold on so I hung up and I phoned the ambulance and at that point the second I got on the phone to them I really did need to push and I started pushing like my body started pushing, so I just got on the floor because I knew, you know, well, I'm going to have to deliver him on the floor, so um, I just got on the floor, on the phone to them, I was trying to speak to them through the contractions, telling them my address, and they said, you know, someone's on their way, just, you know, don't worry, they're on their way, because I was saying to them, you know, I'm scared, I'm by myself, and they didn't realise I was by myself, because she was asking, is there someone there, and I said, no, I'm alone, and, um, she was like, okay, you know, and she basically had to talk, the operator just uh, talked me through the whole thing, um, telling me, you know, uh, I can't remember, when I needed to push, um, and then, you know, she was saying to try and calm down, because my breathing kind of went a bit, um, what's the word? I wasn't breathing, like, I wasn't breathing properly, basically, when I was pushing, so she was saying, you know, try and calm down and breathe, um, you know, through it, not panic because obviously I was panicking because I was by myself so she's trying to calm me down um and then it took about four or five pushes and he was out um and then he was just on the floor um and obviously she says you know is he here and I was like yeah yeah he's on the floor so she was like okay you know grab a blanket you need to rub him you need to make sure there's nothing because he wasn't crying to begin with it's panicking me because he wasn't breathing properly um, and I said that to her I was like he's not breathing properly and she was like okay well um you know rub his face you know make sure there's nothing blocking his nose and then he did cry so he was okay um and then she said that the ambulance is trying to get in and at this point I hadn't realized that my mum and the ambulance were actually outside my flat trying to get in obviously if you live in a block of flats at this time in the morning you have to buzz them in and I couldn't do that because I was delivering Charlie so um, my mum then realized she could go around the back so she went in the back and came up the stairs but again I had to let them in the front door so I literally had to hobble with Charlie hanging out from between my legs because he was still attached to me had to hobble to the door to let them in um and then I opened the door and they were all just like in shock because I was just standing there holding a baby between my legs like they were just like oh she's already delivered him um and then they spoke to the operator and said that they'd arrived and then hung up and everything and then came in to the living room and sorted me out and then waited for the other ambulance to arrive that was going to take us to the hospital um and then we did get taken to the hospital and got checked over, um, delivered the placenta, and I only had a graze as well. I didn't need um, any stitches or anything. 
um, I had a graze. And then six hours later, once I checked Charlie over, we were allowed home. So that was fine. Um, but my mum was joking, actually, afterwards, um, because the ambulance men that arrived first, the ones that were actually meant to be, like, delivering my baby, because obviously I said I was in labour, um, were actually really young. They were about my age, and my mum was actually kind of worried when she was outside with them, because she asked them, oh, have you delivered many babies? And they were like, oh, no, this is our first one. And my mum was like, oh, you know, not that they wouldn't be able to do it, it's just she was kind of worried because they hadn't delivered a baby before. And also the fact they were so young and how they looked, because they were actually quite um, good-looking men. And my mum was like, you would have been so embarrassed if you had to deliver in front of good-looking men, like you know you don't have any dignity obviously and there you are like trying to push a baby out and you've got these men like your age good looking trying to deliver your baby so she said it's kind of lucky that they didn't deliver your baby um which i found quite funny but um yeah and then the, the other men were like more experienced they were older and um yeah so that was kind of how everything went um and Obviously, I wouldn't have been by myself if Jake was here. Now, this is a whole other topic with our relationship, but I'm still very angry and annoyed at the fact that he was not here. Um, my dad and my mum, they're still angry. My dad was actually furious on the phone when I said that he was not staying here. Um, the fact that Jake was still staying in Brighton, um, which is about a 20-minute drive from where I live, um, when I was so near, like, I was overdue and everything, my dad said he should be staying with you every night in case you go into labour, but Jake did not. He was still going out drinking, clubbing and everything um, the day before he even did that. So that's why I was so angry. And... Hi. Um, and the fact that he was not here, he would have been here if he thought, you know... It was a Friday anyway, and he usually does come over Fridays, but he wanted to work the next day on a Saturday to get extra money, and he was not here. So it does frustrate me that he was not here because I was all alone. But in a way, I'm kind of glad because now I just feel like I'm a stronger person. And when people ask me, or you speak about your labour and deliveries, and you can, I can say, well, I delivered Charlie all by myself, so without any help at all, and... You kind of feel better for it, I suppose, because it makes you a stronger person that you've done that by yourself. So in a way, I'm kind of glad, but then there's another side to me that is actually still annoyed in the fact that he was not here. Um, and the fact that he was out the night before, which also really frustrates me. And anyway, it's a whole other story, but um, that's kind of how it went. So he's seven. he was born at seven pounds, three ounces, and we think around 2.16 a.m. We're not exactly sure, obviously, because I didn't really look at the time as soon as I pushed him out. But... Um, that's kind of the time we think. Um, so when he decided to come, there was no hanging around. He literally just was coming then. And I've never, I didn't think, I knew my label would be quick, but I didn't think it'd be that quick. So um, I think my next one, I will literally just not have time at all. Seeing as my mum's third baby, my sister actually came in 45 minutes. So I'm pretty sure next baby will be just ridiculously fast, even quicker than Charlie. But um Obviously, I'm not having any more children for a long time, but when I do, because I still do want more children, um, but obviously this is enough for now, but um, I don't want any more for a while, but yeah, that's kind of how that went, so it's always kind of long. Um, I may have forgotten stuff, but that's kind of the whole gist of things, I need to go and put Kai for a nap, but yeah, that's pretty much how my labour and delivery went. Um, obviously, all the midwives, everyone I've spoken to have been shocked when I've told them my story. Um, Zeus, actually, because Zeus was here... Um, he literally, when I got on the floor on the phone, he sniffed my hair, which I noticed, and then I had a contraction. So, and then I never saw him again. Like, he literally ran and hid. I don't know where he went. I think the cat is scarred for life, literally. He ran and hid behind the washing machine, I think, and he did not come out the whole night because my dad was here watching Kai. But literally, he was obviously scarred for life, um, the poor cat. But um, I just thought it was quite funny that Zeus was basically my you know, midwife, pretty much, um, although it wasn't much help, but, um, I just thought it was quite funny. Anyway, that's pretty much it, um, yeah, so I will get my other videos done, but, like I said, I may have forgotten stuff, but that's it for my labour and delivery, so yeah, bye.